is coming on. Okay, I'm, I think. Yep, just uh, get onto Facebook on your phone, and I can I can find oh, it. It's on. I, I think we're live. Yes, we're live. Good afternoon, everyone. I don't know exactly yet who's with us, but I know that you're here, some of you, and well, you, you'll stop popping up in just a minute. Logan's got set it up and has has us all ready to go. And it. Okay, Christina Oster, Sherry Seymour. Logan's got I am, set it up and has, has me, us all ready to go. The sound is coming off, so we can. Justin, honey, how are you? Brand, you're doing good. Uh, Dana Payne, Deborah Pickering, Patsy Shannon. So good to see all of you. Thank y'all for co coming on. You know, I've been trying to save my voice a little bit so I can go all the way with everyone without with that it's starting to crack and get that tickle it's like a tickle in one side of my throat and uh but when i see your names it just brings life back into all of it and pastor ron i see your your name and uh and i just pray great and ashley danielle honey i love you i've i've been praying for you i've been praying for some of your families some of your families that are going through things the lord had me going through a lot of people today and uh remembering and just holding you up in prayer that god's going to intervene he's he's going to intervene where you feel like hi pastor doc dr so honey it's so good to see you on here and see you with me and and all of us together you oh justice he likes my, my i have a daughter that used to be a beautician and she she's worked with me so i thank you i thank you and and everybody's praying that my a full head of hair come back from COVID. so and it's going to in the name of jesus and, and anybody else that's watching because we have a lot of people suffering the same thing that says logan bowman honey i'm so glad you're watching i adore you and i thank you so much for coming honey and lucia your hair is gorgeous thank you I just pray everybody sees Jesus tonight. That's that's why I'm on here. Alina. Uh, yes, Alina. I'm, I'm so thankful for the Holy Spirit's presence that's falling while I'm sitting here talking. I'm just so grateful for the Jesus, for his spirit, for the love he has for all of us, that we are the body of Christ and he's preparing us uh, for as his bride. And I, I am so thankful. And Asha, I saw your your children this week once or twice. And I've had a busy week. We've had, we've had two birthdays. Actually, Preston's birthday is tomorrow, but, but he's he's in his uh, junior. He's in the hospital in rotations right now. I believe he's in labor and delivery, trying to go through all the different um, departments of the hospital, trying to figure out where the Lord wants him to wind up. So he wasn't going to be able to do his birthday tomorrow so we did that Saturday out at Amanda Wynn's house and Rachel of course you saw Rachel the one on there Rachel and Logan I had to put that on there because you all know them you feel like you know them you're always saying mentioning them uh, when you text me sometimes <clears throat> you feel like they're part of us and they certainly are because I could not do this without them and I'm looking to see oh 8 30 we're gonna get we're get we're going to get started right now in Jesus' name. I want to welcome everyone to the... Have thank you, night. Logan. I love you, honey. Be love careful going home and have a wonderful week. Thank you. You as well. I, we welcome the Holy Spirit right now into this meeting tonight, that there'll be a glorious time with the presence of the Lord in every home, and the burdens are falling off. In your mind, I'm praying for peace to come into your mind and your spirit so you can be a part of whatever the Holy Spirit has for you tonight. This is an uh, incredible time with the Lord. And I'm not even sure how, my, how what I'm going to do tonight, how it's going, because the Lord has just given me new things to, to do. And I'm going to try to do it and just see how far we get. But just welcome the Holy Spirit where you are. Forgive, uh, because of what's coming up and we're going to be doing, forgive everybody. I don't care how painful it is. Say, Lord, I can't feel it. My heart's not in it, but I will to forgive. I'm saying it with my mouth, and I'm asking you to make it real to me as time comes. And forgive everybody. And forgive the Lord. I've had prayed with people the Lord didn't touch till they forgave him, when all the time it was the enemy. So forgive. And then just get ready for the Lord to start blessing us all. And I ask for the same thing for me and for my loved ones. That we're all uh, uh, forgiven. I ask the Lord to forgive us, cleanse us, and wash us. 
and a, we're welcoming the Holy Spirit. And we have new people coming on from all over the world. And we just thank the Lord for that. So I'm going to do our little business thing, and then we're going on with the with what the Lord, what the Holy Spirit has planned for us tonight, that we don't miss anything in Jesus' name. Don't forget, you can leave your prayer request at mtmprayer at gmail.com. And YouTube is under Master's Touch Ministries there. And there's still just three there. I, we had 81 or 80 something over on the other one, but we've had to switch just to Master's Touch Ministry. And so, the, and George was going to try to switch those 80 something over, but ev evidently he can't because I looked and it's still just the three. But it will grow. It, it, it's slow. The way we do it, it's slow, but it's okay. They're there for anybody that wants to go back and watch. So you can still go over Linda Blankenship and see the old ones. Uh, let's see. Let my people go. The book, if you ever, you know, feel it's, that you want to read it, it's my life, really my life story and a lot of miracles, a lot of for the forwards in it. It's like a book. It's just wonderful. And this Holy Fire Publishers, Linda Blankenship. Uh, what I wanted to tell you, they said we have 14, we, we were down 13% in new likes. We had, uh, we had 14 new likes. And it says we're down 13%. And pace and uh, uh, engagements, we were up 6%. And uh, and the post outreach, we were up 121%. And new followers, we have 17, and nothing adds up because we've got had new followers, but yet they said they keep subtracting off our followers. So I don't understand. I can't follow all this. But anyway, we still are like 3.6 thousand women and 6 point something men aged 18 to 34. The men are still in there. And our same countries are leading. The same 10 are Armenia, Madagascar, India, Nepal, New Guinea, the Philippines, Free, Freetown, um, Sierra Loma, that's West Af Africa. And uh, let's see, there were some other ones. I, uh, West Africa also is watching, and um, Pakistan. And I wanted to tell you some of the names because one of the pastors sent a um, prayer request in just a little bit again and said, please have you y'all to pray because they're watching us. Their time is 11 hours difference, I believe, but they're watching. Um, this is from Sanja, S-O-J-I-D-B-H-A-T-T-E. And he's in he's in uh, India, and he said his father was in a terrible accident, and his leg is really messed up. And he sent a picture. He said, "Really pray he needs a miracle with his knee, the bones, everything." So I sent him things that I'm hard to pray and just expect a miracle. So we're all agreeing he's being healed right now in Jesus' name. And she, they don't have the medical like like we do. And he also has a free a free school for kids, um, and he said this. He said this prayer. Just pray that all their needs are met. And then Zana Ishmael needs help, and and he has sent prayer requests in here over and over and over that he needs a miracle. And as Asaph Malak, and y'all know him, he sends pictures, and we pray, and they go where the no bags is being where, and the hundreds are coming to the kingdom, being healed and delivered. And uh, and they've asked us to keep praying for them. He's a, he's a, and he, and he watches YouTube. And actually, two now three of these uh, men have asked me if I'll come on live in their country. And um, on Wednesdays, one of them was Wednesday, and one of them was a, an hour a week. But I I can't figure it out. And I'm trying to figure out how to do the YouTubes and how they can slice it or something and just get the guts out or whatever it is they want. I don't know. Y'all just pray we work everything out. And Gil Faroka, he's he has orphan children, the homeless families, and he needs support. And uh, we're praying God does miraculous things and brings the people around them that can help them. Evangelist, F-A-R-Z-A-N-A, -A -A, um, is Pakistan, and asking us to pray for him. And then the Rachel John, I don't know if y'all watched her or not, and her husband on um, on news feed they have thousands and they're pakistan and early she texted me and asked me if i would do um live whatever they call that with her and i didn't know how to do it and i still don't know how to do it so zayna ishmael of course Kotura needs help 
since prayer sends a message in every day to pray she needs a i think it's a he needs a miracle miraculous miracle to meet their needs uh and then abaddon uh, oh she, this person is from the north ivory coast it's called cato d l v a i n e i believe uh, so I just wanted to y'all to pray for these people. You might not remember things, but you pray. They're they're taking time. They're watching. They're saying it's ministering to ministers are telling us that this is ministering to them, and their people need to hear it. That they say they're Christians. A lot of them, this is what two of them have said. They say there's a they're Christians as group, but they they are, they don't they don't know what it means to be a Christian, and they're in Muslims country. So just pray. I want y'all to pray and agree with me. That this is an outreach, and you're all part of it. And God sees the time when you take time to pray. You might not remember their names, but you can certainly hold them up in prayer. So now I'm asking the Lord, I'm going into prayer for all of us, that the Lord, because I've asked everyone to repent and ask for forgiveness and forgive everybody before we go on. So this prayer, I'm, I'm binding into everyone that ever listens to, this, listens to this, that the Holy Spirit is taking it into you, into your life, into your loved ones, and, and causing resurrection life to come in to you in every part of your life. We are, we are asking for rivers of fresh oil to be poured into us tonight. Rivers, Lord, of fresh oil right from the Holy of Holies into us, right from the heavens, from the and flow into us, O oh Lord. Dwell among us all tonight, Lord, King Jesus. Dwell upon us as King in our hearts, Lord. Let, a, let us heal be, and let us be your meeting place tonight. Let our hearts be being healed and let our hearts be your meeting place tonight, Lord. We surrender our hearts to you as a meeting place for your spirit tonight to do a work in us. Commune with each life. Lord, God, you know my heart and shell is we're praying, God, to change us all into your image and to get us where you want us to go. We fulfill everything you called us to do before we were ever created. Let us be one that only wants to be in your presence and glory. Lord, birth that in us tonight. We're willing to, to pay the price to commune with each one of us tonight in our hearts and that we are the one that's containing your very presence and glory, that we are those vessels, God, that we haven't wasted our time. We have called on you. We've cried unto you. We have pulled into your spirit. We have surrendered in every area that we can possibly surrender. Show us where else we need to surrender, oh God, and let us willingly give it up to know more and have more of you controlling our lives, Lord. Feed us manna from heaven that only you can feed that life, that word that brings life tonight. Oh, God, let your fire consume us, the Holy Ghost fire. Baptize every one of us, Lord, in the Holy Ghost and fire. If you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, God, I ask you the fire to start falling on all of us. Intense fire of the Spirit that our very soul is burning with the fire of the Spirit to get the kingdom loosed into this earth in Jesus' name. Feed us bread from heaven tonight, Lord, that stays with us and changes us and feeds us, feeds those broken places that brings healing and restoration into our lives in all directions. Let your love melt us into your love. Let your love in us melt us into your love, Lord, that we surrender everything to be in that love with you, Lord. In Jesus' name, let the fire anointing anoint us tonight. Let the fire anointing from heaven anoint all of us tonight, Lord. God, sanctify us holy, spirit, soul, and body. Sanctify our mind, our will, and our emotion. Sanctify us, oh God, so that our mind can comprehend what you are calling us to do and who you are and who we are in Christ Jesus. Cause us to run after you. Cause us to want to know you. Cause us to uh, to be revived by you. You, you're the only one that can revive us. Revive us, oh God. And those that need the most revived, touch them first, God. Revive your children tonight, oh God. Pull us into to your sanctuary. Pull us into your sanctuary, oh God. And restore us in Jesus' name. Lord, I bind this into every life, every home. 
every loved one that you're seeking and you're searching and you're finding us and our loved ones and you're doing a work in them that only you can do, God. It's all you. You have to do it. We can't do it, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for that prayer. Now, I'm going to go on to what we're going to be. We, I'm hoping we're going to be uh, going to be. Uh, I'm going to be sharing about the rivers, rivers from the temple, water from the temple. And there's a lot in the Bible about water. All through the Bible, but we're going to be in Ezekiel, I think, if we can get there. But I want to read some just some scriptures about the water. Psalms it's, it's, it's critical to each one of us to know. It represents the Holy Spirit. It's the Word of God and the Holy Spirit in the Word. There is a river whose, whose streams shall make glad the city of God. There is a river whose streams will make glad the city of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He also brought streams of oil out of the rock. That's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He will be unto us a, a broad road river. A broad, a broad river is what it says. That road river. He will be to us a place of streams and a broad river. Thank you, God, that we're in that broad river, Lord. Streams in the broad river, Lord. God, that's Isaiah 33, 21. 43, 18 says, I will open rivers in high places. The rivers come when you're in the high places of the Spirit. The rivers, God wants to get us all into the river where we are in the river. Not all around it, here, there, but in his river. In the, I will open rivers in high places. In the Bible, talks about the high places. That's Isaiah 43, 18. He wants to give us peace like a river. I can't I come I come to them that dwell by the river. That's uh Ezra 313, I believe. I come to them that dwell by the river. And then I'm saying in the river. Cause it's their rivers. To, to run like oil, to pour out oil. That's that's in there again. In uh, Nahum 1.4, it goes on to say, the gates of the city shall be yours. It's, it's, you, it's, we've got to get in that flow of the river, the Holy Spirit in it, in it, in it. He's going to make a, a promised land. He's taking us to the promised land out of the wilderness. And it's through the, the water of the word, the river of the word. Uh, First Samuel says the mist of the river of God. There's mist on the river of God. That's the Holy Spirit. I've seen that mist. Drink of the river. Psalms 36, 8. I will cause them to walk by the river. He's going to cause us. Lord, we're crying out God calls us to walk, calls us to run, calls us to be in that river flowing with you and flowing with your with you, Lord. That's all. I wanted to start off with that, but then we're going on into things that people have been delivered from, because this is critical. People have said, one lady told me she writes down every one of them, and God's doing a work in her life, you will not believe. Okay, the first person, uh, I, I'm, I don't know if it's a man or woman now, because, you know, we weren't here last week, and there's so much going on. Uh, I was praying with this person who was having a lot of emotional problems. I mean, literally, very down. And I got guilt and condemnation. And it was a seesaw. And it's things like this that cause bipolar. I can tell you, I pray with too many people and I, I know what I'm talking about. I don't know everything, but I know for some people, it can't be, it's, it, nothing's everything. But a lot of people have suffered from bipolar because of things like this. This is how I saw it work. And I, he, the Lord showed me what the guilt was. It was a young, oh, I know, it was a young man, young adult. Uh, he's an old, he's not a teenager or he's older. Lusted, he would have girlfriends and the and he's he loves the Lord. He's a godly young man, has been his whole life. But the guilt of not being able to control his thoughts 
and his desires, the devil took, because he wasn't, because it was in his mind all the time, just, you know, driving him just over and over. His mind was over and over and over and over, like a roller coaster, like us. Um, you know, that goes up and down, whatever that is. It never stopped until the place he couldn't stand it. And then he went into total condemnation. And that's when he hit the bottom. And he stayed there and with the devil telling him everything. No good guy. No God doesn't love him. He's out. He's gone. He, he can't, you know, he forgot that it's grace. Because that's what the devil does. He gets your mind and then your emotions so messed up. It starts in your mind. And then your emotions get involved. Now everything has to be delivered, healed and delivered. So the Lord broke those. It was a seesaw. I saw it go up. I saw it go up. The devil go up and hit his head. Mine with guilt, guilt, guilt. And then after he couldn't handle that anymore, it took him down to the bottom. And up and down he went. And up and down he went. And God delivered that young man. I saw little, big, big chains falling off of him. Off of him, off his, and on his back was a heavy weight that had him stooped over. He had no control over that. It was, it was so painful in him. God delivered him. Now I haven't, I haven't gone back on him because there's super, too many people needing help. I heard, a, I heard a pastor on TV today say, it was, um, I forget. It's one, one, a fire, one of our fire pastors. I forget. I just happened to turn on. That 99% of the churches in America do not pray for deliverance. Wouldn't even know how to pray. And if they, somebody asked them how to pray. Nine, when God, the spirit of God, you got to have the spirit, the power, the gifts, the fruit operating. Now, why would you leave your people out here to be destroyed? I mean, I, I, I can't even tell you what's going on. The devil knows his time is short and he's, he's trying to destroy the Christians. He's trying to destroy them. He's, he's grabbing them off. Suicide is so high. So he got all that off of him. Now, under there could be a lot of pockets of things. I don't know. But those two things are gone. The seesaw is gone. The chains are gone. And the weight on his back is gone. That was one. Then I was praying for someone that uh, kept having miscarriage. And I got a deaf spirit in the uterus. A deaf spirit in the uterus. And that person was delivered from that. You know, I, if there's other things I don't know, that's what the Lord gave me. And, the, and while I was doing this, it came to me to to, to tell to just share this with you. Couples and dating couples, they care about each other. There's three things that, that really every relationship has to have, and it has to be nurtured. And one is to give each other attention, and one is to give each other affection, and one is to give each other appreciation. Those three things are critical in every relationship. And I've learned that through the years, you know, because we had four children within five. I had five pregnancies in five years and almost died with, with one. And that, so we wound up with four living babies. And I'm thanking God for them. And y'all all know them because you see them, see, you know, they get posted. And all the grandchildren, great-grandchildren. But those three, you, the Lord told me to remind every one of you, they're in a kind of relationship. Attention. Affection and appreciation. Those three things, and they all start with they. That's really easy. Then the next person I was praying with, and I have not even begun to get where we're going with. I, I was praying one morning for a person, and I heard rage and anger. And I, I text this young man, and I said, um, you need to, and this is, this is called restoring your soul. There's a lot of places you have to let the Lord has to get the memories up to get get the damage to your emotions out. It's called restoring your soul. So I said to him, get quiet before the Lord. Forgive everybody. Forgive yourself. Forgive everybody. And ask the Lord to start bringing up the memories. Every, and I said, you may cry your eyes out. You may feel exactly the way you felt when it came in. But as you release each one of those you'll feel a little bit better the healing comes, but it is a process. And I said, stay on it. Command the coverage. To, if you get stuck, command the coverage to come off. The enemy loves to cover it so you can't get to it. Just And it has to go. You you speak it, he has to go in the name of Jesus. And you overcome him with the blood. I said, once you get a memory, 
renounce it, command it, go, thank Jesus, you know, after you've forgiven and all, and just start saying, if you don't know anything else today, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood, you overcome Satan with the blood of the Lamb. I'm trying to teach people because I'm not going to be here forever. Y'all need to listen. I'm telling you what works. I've walked this path now since I was 25 born again. Jesus came and saved me, like, gloriously. 27, I was baptized in the Spirit and immediately found out about the deliverance ministry and the, the man prayed over me. I didn't even know what, what was going on. And I saw and heard fear of the future. It went across my head like a ticker tape. I could see it, but I heard it also, and he broke it, and it left me. It w works. And after that, I went after everything, anything I could think of, and I said the blood. I didn't know anything else but to say the blood. And I said it. I would say it all night if I needed to, if I felt the oppression of something. You can be delivered. You, it is written. You overcome Satan. Forgive everybody by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. I didn't even know about forgiveness, but when I was born again, I forgave her, and Jesus just washed me. You know, but I've learned the critical power of forgiveness. You have to have that. So that he's working on rage and anger, and he says he's working on it, and he's commanding it to go. And I said, keep going, because he's, uh, uh, he said he felt dead, just dead. These emotions uh, piled up and piled up and piled up through the years. And you may have come from a traumatized family. It's, well, most of it's not even your fault. It happened as a child. And, and, and it just, if the enemy knows how to try to mess you up before you ever get where you're supposed to be going. But God has given us a way out. And it's called restoring your soul. And David knew about it because he had had a man murdered, had had slept with his wife, got her pregnant, and then had her husband murdered. And and so, you know, he, and then that gen, that was a generation of course went down in his family, went on down. So that was another one. And then uh, I prayed with, um, for two people, the parents called because the kids were having identity confusion. They didn't know. They thought they weren't a male or female now because of the stuff they'd heard. And I got, we broke identity confusion was one of the spirits that it was a lie right from the pits because they heard it. And then made a, then that devil made you start thinking, yeah, 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 yeah. And by the time he finished this with you, you believe it. You believe it. And confusion and deception and lie these were deception spirits lying spirits identity confusion spirits uh, gender confusion spirits and it could be a lot of other things you know there could be they could their hormones could but i'm just telling you what it just happened to two people two two young people so when you when you if you if you know you're dealing with strife or say i would say strife Ask the Lord to start uncovering every memory that goes back to where it started. Get back. Just keep going and slay it. Usually you get the last things and just keeps going until you get to the bottom, the root of it. But sometimes it, uh, you, God does it his way. But you just got to be open to try to do it. And do it. Don't stop. Do not let the devil just stop, store you. Jesus paid the price for his people to be free. And forgive is at the top. Forgive the Lord. Give yourself. A lot of people can't forgive themselves, and the, they have to. We have to work with them. We have to command their will to get free. A lot of people's wills in such bondage, they can't make a decision. Their mind tries to agree that they should. The spirit does, but their will is so bound. You can break. You can get people's will free too. It's the demonic strongholds in Jesus' day. I'm trying. I just. I just wanted to cover some of the ones I prayed for this week. Uh, Command the coverings to come off. Uh, if you don't know what it, what you're dealing with, say, I command the covering to come off and identify yourself. And ask the Lord to bring a memory up and you can start identifying it and then renounce them. Bind them back to the enemy. Bind them back to the master and close the door. Seal it there permanently and turn them, ask Jesus to take, turn them back over to Jesus when he's ready to deal with them. That way they can't get in another person or go in somebody else in the bloodline. Like I've seen cancer do many times. And it, well, the Lord's telling me, if you're going around somebody that's fixing to die or died, you do not go around them unless you cover yourself the blood and bind all demons from touching you. 
if people die, the spirit usually the spirits that come out of them. They come out and they look for somebody right around their family members. If they can't find one, they find whoever they can because they're ordered to be in somebody to do the damage. Don't go around anybody like that unless you've protected yourself. Saturate yourself in the blood of Jesus. Put the arm on and go. I'm trying to share things I have learned through the years. And you may learn it how to do it and do it differently. Well, it says this uh, it's the same spirit but different administrations. And, and people in deliverance ministry all do it differently. It works. And we're doing it and it's scriptural. And the main thing, we're getting the devil out of people. Now, the Lord told me to share these things with you all tonight. That's why I don't know if I'll get to the water or not. Because I, I'm going to stop and pray when I need to. This is Satan, things you can break. I'm going to name some things that God's going to quicken it to some of you. You better write it down so the enemy doesn't rob it from you. So you can start working on it and get your family set free. You may know someone this is on. Help them get free. You, if you are born again Christian, you have power over all the power of Satan. And I'm going to read those scriptures. And you have power over all the power of Satan, and nothing can by any means hurt you. Plead the blood. Submit yourself to the Lord. Submit the person to the Lord. Submit the demonic spirit to the Lord. And bind it and cast it out. And get rid of it. Okay, satanic prayers that have been prayed against you. Cultural covenants. Like if you came from a culture or a far, you know another country, where the, where where they were uh, had covenants and religions and whatever, and it was a, 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 a satanic you know satanic culture, and their religion had satanic things in it, and many people have gotten prayer from this for this, or it could even be here in America. Different, I don't know about the different groups. Someone called me about a church. I've never heard of such stuff. So I looked it up on the internet. There's a lot of people go. It's the it's the most demonic thing I have. I mean, I didn't even know things like that existed here in the United States. It's called a spirit filled church. And the little girl, the girl that asked me to pray for some people that she knows there, and if I would pray with them, sent the sent the name of it and it's on the internet and it and it and it sent you to every book that's in the occult that you cannot even imagine. And they think they're serving the Lord and walking with the Spirit. Deception's an evil thing. And anybody can be deceived. That's why you've got to know the word of God and stay in fellowship with people. Because if you're deceived, you don't know you're deceived. That's what and and this one of the greatest things before Jesus comes back is deception. Being deceived. Say the blood of Jesus a lot during the day. To keep stuff away from you. So cultural covenants so we're not of the Lord. Um, negative in a vast. Where people, where you think, where you may say, I'm no good and I'll never be any good. You have just, you have just cursed yourself. So break any negative vows you've said against yourself or your loved ones. And set them free. Call it out by name and bind it and cast it out. Submit it to the Lord. Cast it out. It, it won't go. They don't go. It's called warfare. Fasting. I know people in the occult that face weekly. Fasting prayers that were prayed against you or your loved one that was not of the Lord. That has a lot of power. Bloodline curses, the things handed down through the bloodline, and we deal with that all the time. Satanic rituals. I pray for many people have gotten delivered from, I mean, the Lord lets me see the rocks around the fire, the, the going around and chanting, all that stuff, until he, and then he overturns it and throws it away and, and demolishes it once you go into warfare over it. It's real stuff. And it's destroying a lot of Christians. Incantations against you. There's uh, there's some of the religions that they 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 all get together and and, and say the same thing over 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 and the, and all kind of things happen. Whatever it is, they I mean, it's such, such power in it. Evil wishes. 
If you've ever wished evil in the body, repent God and break it off of them. Ask God to forget. Hexes. Spells that have been put on your finances, on your ministry, your job. Or anything. Think where things aren't working right. Something's wrong all the time. All demonic activity. Just find out. You know, there's so much. There's a thousand, there's a million things you could probably say. I can't say it all. I'm just mentioning what the things... Um, that I'd written down years ago. And a lot of us from because I've been praying for deliverance for 50, 60, 70, over over 50 years now, I think like 55 years or something. I've learned a lot. I've learned most of it from the work of the Holy Spirit. All f spiritual forces of darkness. And, and I remember reading this. I don't I don't remember ever coming against it. It's called ne the Netherworld, N-E-T-H-E-R world. And I haven't had time to look it up, but I wrote it down. Someone uh, had put out a list of things, and it was in it. But they were saying the ne nether world, evil forces of that world, break off of you. And I, I don't know if that means the demonic kingdom or something more, you know, in that specific. Anybody's curse the work of your hands, so that your work isn't your hands aren't blessed. Your work, bad luck. Accident prone. Uh, a bad, a, a, a bad luck personality. That. Now generational inherited sins, and we and I deal with that all the time. I deal with my own self, my family. You know, I mean, you do, you just do because you've got people that's come. That, they didn't teach about deliverance in the Southern Baptist in the Methodist churches where my. Grand, my grand, my great granddaddy was a Southern Baptist minister, and there's a church in Chesterfield, South Carolina. He built, started, still there. My family has reunions there in that church every summer, but that they, they didn't know about getting set free from all this kind of stuff. Generational inherited sins. You can break it, and I've shared it over and over. You go into the bloodline. You repent for the iniquities. You ask for forgiveness. You forgive. You ask God to forgive. And then you break it, bind it out of the bloodline, completely break the curse and, re and reverse it and send it back to its master, all of it, and cleanse the bloodline with the blood of Jesus. Then you turn around and you know about sealing it there and all that with blood. I can't keep going over that every time. You know that. You seal it there in the name of Jesus permanently and then turn it back over to the Lord. Um, let's see. Make sure, and then you release the blessings of Abraham into that bloodline and all of the blessings that are, uh, all the promises in the word of God that Jesus purchased for you at Calvary. Release those and, and bind them into the bloodline. And ask the Holy Spirit to anoint it, to bring it to life, breathe life on it in Jesus' name. Now, this is for children born with, or people born with problems. Cellular disorders, genetic disorders. Break them. Break all unhealthy soul ties. And I'm going to get into this because I run into this a lot, lot. When I talk about unhealthy soul ties, and I have it written down here somewhere. You, uh, your mate, the people that you were connected with before you were married, break every soul tie. And actually, I have prayed with people that have cursed the person that broke up with them so they can never be blessed or never get married, or never be loved, or the marriage will be a failure, you know, all, just whatever evil's in their heart. Break all soul ties, all spiritual ties, all financial ties, all emotional ties, all, every kind of tie you can think of. Break it, break it, break it, bind it, cast it out of your, cast it out. Cleanse that area with the blood and dedicate every part of that part back to the work of the Holy Spirit permanently and close every door afterwards and seal it permanently with the blood of Jesus so nothing can ever come back in that place except wholeness and healing and restoration in Jesus' name. Just, uh, let's see. That's where I've gotten that to the about your mate. Unhealthy relationships of any kind. Break anything that they could have left on you. Let, 
You just don't need, we don't know, you don't know people's hearts. Just keep praying for them, God, to bless them. But you break anything they left on you or put on you or cause you to err in any way. Um, I, I just, I wrote down here. Don't ever forget the power of the blood of the cross. The price Jesus paid so we could have our souls restored and we can be free from the enemy in the name of Jesus. Uh, break all witchcraft spirits. And this is one. There's people that uh, witchcraft, divination, where spirits follow you, demonic spirits follow you. Like uh, uh, From occult people, they have placed one to follow you and do its work continuously. So go do the same thing. Submit yourself to the Lord. Break any kind of demonic spirit that's been sent and commanded to follow you and mess you up in any way. Bind it up. Send it back to its master. Close the door permanently. And you do everything I've taught, told you to do. Poverty is another one. But this thing, the witchcraft spirit that follows you is real. And, and they're assigned to mess you up. To stop you, uh, you know, I, so many ways they can work. So, I'm just making sure I don't, I don't want to miss anything that I wrote. These are the things that came to me in the last day or two to write down. I, there's a thousand other things, but this, this you needed to hear. So right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, everybody that realized something of this is on them, and they ain't started praying. We bind up, we submit every one of us. If you're a Christian, if you're not a Christian, do not get into deliverance until you know Jesus is your Savior. We ask the Lord God Almighty right now in the name of Jesus, we forgive everybody. And we, we as the body of Christ, Lord, are coming to you in, in the name of Jesus. And we submit ourselves to you and we resist the devil. We resist everything that was ever mentioned here tonight or things that you reminded people of while I'm talking. We Break every demonic spirit called out. And if you've got another one, call it out. And we're agreeing. We are in agreement that everything that's been called out, that people are aware of, we bind and break out of their lives right now in the name of Jesus. We break it. We may come in and come up and come off of you and come out of you and come off of anything that has to do with you or your loved ones in the name of Jesus Christ. We break the powers. We bind you. We render you helpless and powerless. We bind the strong man over it. We bind the demonic kingdom over it. The networking of those demons. We bind them all. We render them helpless, powerless. We bind them back to their master. We bind them there permanently. We close the door. We seal it in the name and the blood of Jesus. We turn every one of you demons back over to the Lord Jesus to deal with you in his time whenever he's ready to do that. Now for the people getting deliverance, we thank you, God, that they're cleansed by the blood. And that area, the areas wherever these demonic spirits have been manifesting themselves, they cannot anymore. They are bound permanently, released permanently back to the master. And we ask you, God, now to cleanse those areas with the blood of Jesus Christ. Every one of them. We command the devils to come up and come out. They cannot stay. They're bound. Their powers are broken. They have no more assignment against any life that's been listening to this in agreement. In the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus delivers every one of us. The blood of Jesus Christ delivers every one of us. It is written, we overcome you, Satan, with the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Our testimony is that we have power of all the power of Satan and nothing can by any means hurt us. So we bind you out of us, out of our lives. We release you. We cleanse those areas with the blood. And we ask the Lord God Almighty right now, we dedicate every part of us outside and inside of us where there was any harassing devils back to the Lord Jesus Christ. We dedicate us, every part of this, back to the Lord Jesus Christ to be under the control of the Holy Spirit and no other spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. We, sat, we say this is a permanent deliverance, a permanent healing, a permanent freedom from these arrested devils. And we close the door. We thank you, Jesus, that this is permanent. We seal it in the blood and the name of Jesus. And we thank you, God, that that part of us in our lives, inside or out, or anybody we're praying for now is free. And the freedom, they're going to walk in that freedom, Lord, and in your love and your provision 
for deliverance and restoring our souls in Jesus name. God, I thank you. I praise you for your power. I praise you for your power. I thank you for the cross. I thank you for your blood that destroyed Satan once and for all forever. And you've given the church power over him to set us free. God, through the power of the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit and the blood. We claim it, we decree it, we declare it over every home and every life, over there, everything to do with those lives, Lord God, that we start seeing victory in every area, <clears throat> that we start seeing the freedom that comes from being free, that you're setting us free, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that Satan can't hide behind anything. We command every covering to come off and every demon from hell to go back where they came from for permanently and forever. And we close every door and give it back to the Lord Jesus Christ under his control permanently in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Agitation is leaving someone right now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone's been furloughed. It's not like furloughed like you think of it. Something else. God Almighty is turning that around and there'll be no furlough. You're going to be, you, the Lord's going to station you. And it's going to be a permanent blessed place in Jesus' holy name. There's a crisis taking a place in someone's life right now. And God Almighty is in there and he's turning around like a whirlwind coming in. And delivering you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And the peace of God is hitting you. And you're feeling the peace of God falling on you in the name of Jesus. Correcting that problem right now in the name of Jesus Christ. You're standing in the middle of a floor somewhere, God, and you feel like you were spinning. And God said his peace is coming and he's equipping you and he's delivering you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Infidelity is being delivered out of people's lives. Infidelity is going in the name of Jesus Christ. The sin of it, the iniquity of it. It's being cleansed by the Lord, by the blood of the Lamb, in Jesus' holy name. Fascination with the occult is being broken off of several Christians. Fascination, you cried to God for forgiveness, for dealing with the occult in any way, and ask him now. He's delivering you. If you'll just do it right now, you'll be set free while the anointing is flowing to set you free in Jesus' name. We break it and we send it back to the Master permanently. And we close the door, ask God to fill you with the Holy Ghost in every area, that your answers come from the Word of God that says truth and life in the name of Jesus, that far above anything any devil can tell you in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And he's equipping some of you saints. He's equipping you in areas that you need to be equipped in. The Word is equipped. He's equipping you tonight in in areas that you needed this equip, equipment. He's doing it by the Spirit of Almighty God. Raise your hands and thank Him. In the name of Jesus Christ. He's jolted someone. There's someone being jolted by the Spirit to wake you up before it's too late. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because He loves you and He's yearning for you. In Jesus' name. There's a fireball, like a fire, the whole ghost falling. I don't know if it's one person or many. A fireball is falling right from the throne room from heaven. The fire of Almighty God is touching some lives right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Intolerance is leaving someone. Someone's been very intolerant. No one can work with you. God's breaking that off of you and setting you free so you can be at peace in Jesus' name. And blend in in Jesus' name. He's making some crooked places straight and all over the place. Crooked places are being made straight in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise you, Jesus. 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 Someone's hallucinating and God's delivering you from that demon. That demon of back, back, uh, of uh, um, a back flashing, where, where a back flash or whatever they call that. Yeah, you're being delivered right now mentally in the name of Jesus. He's correcting you and healing you and delivering you. It's from where you dealt with some drugs or something earlier. God's healing you right now, delivering you and giving you a sound mind in Jesus' name. Praise you, Jesus. Lord, we bound all these things to the pits forever. Cannot ever come back. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loosening the heavens, heavens 
glory on us tonight. The glory of God fall on all of us. The presence of Almighty God saturate us. The sweetness of the presence of Jesus go into every home now, Lord, and just encapsulate us in it. In your name, Lord Jesus. In your name, Lord Jesus. Bright's disease is being healed. Bright's disease is being healed. Thank you, Jesus. I command that disease to leave. In the name, if I'm correct, it's kidneys. Something to do with the kidneys, I believe. I command Bright's disease, disease to leave everybody that has it and be healed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Esophagus is being healed. In the name of Jesus. Phlebitis is being healed. In the name of Jesus, I bind all these things back to the pits permanently. In Jesus' name, Jesus, you said, is it easy to say your sins are forgiven or be healed? And so you, so we, we've all repented, Lord, so that every one of us, if that's it, we all should receive our healing. And you also told the disciples when, it was, when the man was having a problem, was it his fault or the parents? And you said neither. It was for the glory of God because you were going to do a miracle that brought glory to God. So, God, we thank you that whatever it is, the people are receiving their healing because that healing is, for, is belongs to the children according to your word of truth in the name of Jesus. In the name, somebody's false teeth are given problems. God's healing all of that in Jesus' name. A fragmented, a frag, fragmented mind, fragmented. God's healing your mind, healing it. And restore it, and it came from either a lick on your head or COVID or something. Something caused it. The Lord's healing your mind right now in Jesus' name. A lot of frustrations leaving people. You're going to realize it wasn't even worth it because of what's worth worth everything is that you have the peace of God that paces all understanding. Some long-standing illnesses are being healed. Long-standing illnesses are being healed by the by Jesus Christ Himself. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's something to do with a warship, and I'm not sure what that is. So we ask God to surround it with holy angels. And to protect whatever it is, and that there'll be no problems anywhere in Jesus' name. I don't know if it's strand. I don't know if it's a ship that's stranded or needs help or is, or being contemplated to send. I don't know. We just ask God to intervene and and take care of whatever it is in Jesus' name. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you. Someone's watching me. This pious. P-I-O-U-S, I think is how you spell it, pious. And the Lord said, he's going to touch you. And you're going to just wonder, where in the world have I been? Jesus is going to do a work in your life that you're not going to believe in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for that touch of love. In Jesus' name. A polynodal cyst is being healed. When I call it out, it can be, all of these can be for more than one person. In Jesus' name. Aside, ribs. There's somebody with rib problems. Lord's healing your ribs. I just saw the whole rib, like on one side. The Lord's healing your ribs in Jesus' name. The clavicles being healed, a clavicle. Hearts, the Lord's touching hearts and healing them in Jesus' name. Funguses are being healed. Anything else, Lord? I don't want to miss any deliverance or healing. They're both the same to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the peace of God that paces all in sin and falling in homes, Lord. Rejuvenating, 
rejuvenating your people by your spirit. In Jesus' holy name, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, thank you, Lord. That's That was, I had to do that. The Lord just wanted me to do that. And, he's, he, and actually, I thought that might be all I would do, but it's already 930, so it may be. I, there was the word, the scripture he gave me tonight. You know, I usually read from Isaiah who Jesus was and, and what he did. And he told the church to do the same thing and the and greater works than that that we, we do as a Deanna and uh, uh, Regina. I see your names and I'm sure I've missed a lot of people. Thank y'all. I'm asking God to send his power and homes that you receive your healing, whether it was called out or not. The Lord's doing a mighty work and deliverance to his people tonight. Abby, honey, I love you, and I'm praying for your husband to be totally healed in Jesus' name, and, and that everything's taken care of, and uh, when it's all over, he'll be as good as new again in Jesus' name. This is what, uh, this is from Ecclesiastes, and somebody needs to hear this tonight. Now, Ecclesiastes, as far as I know, was written by um, Solomon, King David's son, by, uh, by Bathsheba and David, and he was the wisest king that ever lived, if I remember correctly. He, he wrote Ecclesiastes, and the last, the last two verses say this. This is what he said after all of life and watching. And, and you should just read Ecclesiastes. It's not very long. It's, it's something. He said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And that's the end of it. That's how he ended Ecclesiastes. Is that not powerful? Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So go get yourself cleaned up and ask for forgiveness for everything. That, you just need to read Ecclesiastes. It's very, it's just wonder. It's a good thing to read. Um, so I, a, I will just get started a little bit and then we'll finish this next week. I thank the Lord for the he, for the deliverances that there's some mighty breakthroughs coming. Mighty breakthroughs. In the name of Jesus, tonight, homes are going to be changed tonight. Those devils are going to the pits tonight and can never look back, nor ever in another person, ever in Jesus' name. Father, if there's anybody watching this that has not met you as in Jesus as their Savior, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, I, I'm just, oh, here's what you need to, here's what you need to do. As, and listen, Jesus came and, did, and just helped me with it. I'm asking him to come and help you. You have to believe in your heart that Jesus was raised from the dead, that he was the son of God, that he died on the cross. He was raised from the dead. He died for your sins. From the very beginning, God demanded a blood, a blood sacrifice to cleanse sin. And it was always these perfect animals. And then after Jesus, Jesus fulfilled everything God required from now till the end forever with man and it was his blood and so the, his blood is in heaven and it's there for you so your sins can be forgiven but you have to ask him to for, repent and and uh, invite him to come into your life into your heart forgive you of your sins and believe that and believe this and and then go tell somebody the more you tell the, the more real it becomes to you and stay there. You keep praying till you feel the witness of the Spirit inside of you. And I say this a lot because I was in the church, very active, leaders in the women's club, been in church for years. My husband was the head of all kind of stuff, taught the adults and men's class and all. I didn't know Jesus. I knew the word. It was I had I knew this up here what I heard, but I didn't know the Lord Jesus. So make sure you know him. You stay, because he says, when you seek me with your whole heart, you will find me. That's a promise. So don't stop until you know he has entered into your life. You will know it. There's no doubt. When you meet somebody, you know you've met them. You will know it. 
So I, I say that out of desperation because of what happened to me. I would have been baptized, but I didn't know him. And, the, and in a deep depression, he came to me. I repented, cried. I, I mean, I saw his holiness. I felt it. And I saw it beside me. And that was the end of me. It crushed everything. And nothing in me was worth. I mean, I just can't even tell you beside his holiness. But his, the blood of Jesus Christ is the only thing that will get us to heaven. And it has to be the blood of Jesus Christ because he willfully left heaven, was born of a virgin. He willfully came to offer himself up for me and for you. But you've got to accept it. And, and, and it's a free gift. It costs you. It is a free gift. Just cry it for him to come in. And fill you with his spirit. Forgive you. Cleanse you. And then go tell somebody. And then go be baptized. Then I had to be baptized. I got baptized again. Because they said. Whoever believes on me and baptized will be saved. So I knew. And I got baptized in the pool. Just the swimming pool. The second time. But get baptized. I, I was. Uh, what I was going to share tonight. And I'm just going to share it just for a minute or two. And then we'll. It's 930. I'm not going to stay late. Because I know people have to go to work tomorrow. The, uh, my teaching was the temple. The temple. as And Ezekiel, of course, several of the uh, Revelation talks about the water from the temple. There's several. Isaiah talks about it. But I'm hitting on Ezekiel mostly. The temple in Greek is N-A-A-S. And it refers to the Holy of Holies. So any, whenever you, tonight, remember that. Or if I go on this next week. When you hear the word temple, it's in Greek, it is in A-A-S, and it refers to the Holy of Holies. So when the Lord's talking about the temple, he's talking about the Holy of Holies, where his presence is, where he is, where the glory, where the supernatural was. So 1 Corinthians 3, it says, the temple of God is in you. Did you know that? The temple of God is in you. So that means that the presence is in you. You are the temple of God. Not the tabernacle anymore. You are that. So we, if you're born again, we are carrying that in us. And it is a process in life to get us more and more and more into uh, staying in there. Staying in that walk. This, you know, there's maturity that comes with all of this. But you've got to be on board and work. And and, and it's up to you how fast you move in or how, you know, how... It's up to you. You can stay, stall anywhere you want to. But God wants to put, mature us into, into full maturity. Uh, now, Ezekiel called, um, Ezekiel is called the Old Covenant, the Book of the Holy Spirit. A lot of people call that. Call that book the Book of the Holy Spirit. Because it's about the water. And the water is about the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. I mean, you can't. Um, God, let's see. It speaks, Ezekiel speaks of the Son of Man, and it's a lot of times, I think it's 93 times something's called the Son of Man. God called Ezekiel Son of Man. And, uh, and in the New Testament, Jesus was called the Son of Man 88 times. In Matthew, it was, he was called the Son of Man 32 times. Mark, 14 times. Luke, 14. 25 times, John 12 times, and then other times. It was 88 times totally in the New Testament. Jesus was called the Son of Man. Um, it's a, This whole thing about the river is a picture of the power of the Holy Spirit entering into, into the believer. The whole thing with Ezekiel. And it's a wonderful picture of our walk with the Lord and getting us there where he's trying to take us. I went and looked up how many times is the, is the son is is the son of God Jesus called the son of God in the New Testament, and it says it was seventy six times, sixty five times Jesus Christ himself called himself the son of uh, son of God. I just I just think it's interesting when you know how intense these words are and what they mean and they're repeated over and over. There's a reason for why God repeats these things over and over so we get it. It's significant. 
So tonight we're looking at the a picture of the Holy Spirit entering into us and, and, and maturing us and moving into everything God called us to be as the bride of Christ. I want to tell this, this I read this a long, long time ago and just touched me and I, because people in different places in their life that will watch this, but God wants, we can all change tonight and go in another direction. If you're still alive, you still have a chance and you have the opportunity to change your direction and go in the direction the Lord wants you to go. And this, this was so interesting. I read this years ago and I took a note about it. It's this man named Alfred um, was reading the obituaries one day and it, and it was all about him, but he was alive reading it. And it, and it was this, his, his brother had died, but they had written thinking it was him and they wrote about his life. And he had um, invented dynamite that was more powerful than ever before and had killed many people uh, that, than had ever before been killed by, and, and he made a fortune out of it. Now, it was his brother that died, but they got it mixed up and put this in his obituaries. And this turned his life around forever. And he's changed his focus on life. His name was Alfred. And he's the one that came up with the Nobel Prize. And he, he wanted to honor any chemist that better lives. The opposite of what he had done. So it's never too late. He says that everybody ought to have a chance to reach their obituaries in, in the middle of life or whenever. And, and so that you can make choices whether you want to continue that way. And so he says it's never too late to change your course in life. You can change your obituary tonight. And it's called the Nobel Prize of Peace. I don't know if that's what it's still called tonight because this was written years ago about him. He wrote this himself and I wrote it down. We all make choices and tonight I'm asking every one of us, me included, that our choices are directly related to the Word of God and the call of Jesus Christ on every one of our lives. No matter what you're doing in life, He's called you there and has a purpose, and that you're fulfilling it right where you are. And if it's things that need to be changed, I pray you read your obituary. You can you can think what what it would say and change it tonight. You don't want to have regrets when you can change something now and 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 lead a whole different new a life. And the, the main thing you're going to be meet, meeting your maker, the one that created you, the one that loves you, the one that gave his life for you. And you certainly want to, um, the a focus in life is to please him. You know, I'm not getting any names over here, so I don't, you know, I don't know. I can't, I don't know. I can't work with that and do this. So we tonight, we have the water flowing. We have, we are the temple with the water flowing. You don't realize how valuable you as an individual how valuable you, you are. Because if you know Jesus, the water is in you. You are the temple of the water. Of the it's the it's the same thing as the because you're his temple. And this water, it went through a, a dry land, a wilderness to the Dead Sea. And I think it was like twelve hundred feet, a little bit more than that, below sea level. It was a deep as far down as you can go. The, in the depths of humanity. It's a picture of humanity. That this water in you, if we do it right, will flow to the depths of humanity where nothing else can live, where they're not living either, and bring life. Because it says everywhere the water, whatever it touched, there was life. You are the temple. I am that temple with this life in us of water to flow out to the depths of humanity. The furthest thing, the deepest below sea level. Yes, God, we're the sea, sea of humanity. It's a sea of humanity. It was no life. It was death. No, no forces. The water has to flow from the temple. And it healed everything it touches. It healed because it's life. And tonight, I, I, bind, I did this last week. God, thank you for reminding me of this. I bind death off of everything to do with you. I bind death out of your health. 
about death out of any part of your body that's being deteriorated or, or being destroyed. I bind death off your relationships. I bind death off your finances. I bind death off of your relationship with the Lord. I bind death off of every aspect of your life, your loved one's life, your mate's life, until Jesus, I'm binding every form of death off of you now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I break the powers of it and I release in the place and I bind into every one of us resurrection life everywhere death is set in i command and i command it to be released and i release in the mighty name of jesus through the power of the holy spirit resurrection life into every part of you and every part of your life and your mate's life and your loved one's life and your church's life i bind resurrection life into the body of christ resurrection life resurrection life lord jesus pour it into us oh god in jesus name resurrection life and then let it flow out of us to the depths of humanity to see the dead of humanity oh god let what i'm doing tonight flow to humanity lord around the world that they hear it but not only hear it it becomes part of them it is engrafted in them it is bringing life to them it is setting them free a divine encounter with god almighty and the power of the Holy Ghost tonight in Jesus' name. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. You are the temple with the water. God, I ask you now in the name of Jesus to release every one of us from our bellies. And out of our bellies is flow rivers. Rivers, oh God. Rivers of your living water. That's going to the depths of humanity and bringing life. And everywhere the water flows is bringing life. Turning life, death into life. And healing, oh God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. There's more people on earth today than ever before. And if God ever needed vessels that were flowing with rivers flowing out of there in the most being, it has to be today. We've got a, we've got a, um, the honor of living a day to bring millions into the kingdom. Flood us, oh God. Flood us with those rivers. And flood this earth with your rivers, oh God. By your spirit in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' holy name, in Jesus' holy name. I'm just going to do this and then I'm going to stop tonight because I'm, I'm you know, I know I'm, I'm, I'm going on with the temple in the water. Because as I said this, to every one of us in a different place in the walk, in our walk in maturity. And I'm going to hit on this just a little bit and we're going to keep going. Because God is going to do a work in every one of us. And he's not going to stop till we yield, yield, yield. Self. Love of self. The love of God. So we're going to look at the water levels. They increase Each time they increased by 1,000 cubits, which was one-third of a mile, I read. That meant one-third of a mile. As Ezekiel looked, he would go 1,000 cubits, and they would measure. And it would be... Uh, Every one thousand, every every one thousand cubits, the water. First, it was a trinkle, tr like a trinkle that came under the threshold, which is like out of our threshold. It's just a tri a tri tri trinkle coming out of whatever, just a little stream. That's what he first saw. It was coming out of the temple under the threshold. Thousand, when you see thousand, it means perfection or completion or divine order. And this is a divine order of, gr uh, of growth for the Christian. And you can, you can it, multiply it. You can get it. You can move very quickly. And some people move in and totally yield and go right on. I had a lot of, my soul had to be restored, but I was also uh, telling everybody. I, it didn't stop me from moving out and telling them, going and sharing everything I knew. But I, the Lord, you know, I was in the process, and everybody's in a different place. And more, some of us had a lot more uh, soul to be restored than others. But God has the answer for all of us. God takes each one of us who are in the temple. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit and brings completion to each level till we are fully mature. And I know that's true. Uh, and I know that even in my own life. He's the author and finisher of our faith. But you've got to yield. You can help. So I want to tell the first, um, the different levels in the Bible. In uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 1, it talks about um, in the new N-E-P-I-A-S. And that's babes in Christ. 
So first of all, he calls us babes in Christ. That's the first level. You, you're in Christ. The second one is P-A-I-R-D-I-O-N. And I may not be spelling these exactly right, because I wrote these down years and years ago. It speaks of children. It go from babe to children. That's 1 John 2.18. And then T-E-K-I-N-O-N is also translated children, but older children. John 13, 33. And I hope I'm getting the scriptures right. But you know, you need to get in the Bible and look up some things yourself. So it's in you, your eyes see it, your ears, and you it, it's more powerful. And then the next level, so we're now we've got the babies and the children, children and then older children. And then it's H-A-V-I-D-O, and that's fully matured son that's second corinthians c8 6 18 so you've got baby children then older children then sons and then p-a-t-e-r i believe a pattern it's mature fathers and mothers and that's that's the maturity where 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 you are as you get i pray i'm close to this and getting into it now is, and walking in the spirit and the holy of holies is flowing out of us have a god's whatever he's calling us to do but if if it's flowing there's life there's always life where jesus resurrection he is resurrection life he can't be anywhere where there's not life that's first john two thirteen, um the mature father and mother and i pray god every one of us get there in jesus name we need the maturity brought to the church for sure. Because the river has to flow through us to the world. That's how it flows. It's through us to the world. This water can be bitter and then it, then it becomes sweet. It, it, for everything it touches lives. The bitter for me was getting restored, being willing to pay the price to stay in the restoration of everything in me that had been damaged as a child. Thank God, you know, I had a stable husband. And and we went up and we we found out about being baptized in the spirit pretty I was twenty seven. I was married when I was twenty twenty and I found out about that. I was born again at twenty five and baptized in the spirit at twenty seven. I just thank God for all of it. Oh my goodness. John seven twenty eight. For out of your innermost being is full rivers of living water. John talks about that living water flowing out of us. Hosea 10, 12. It says, uh, Sow to yourself in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground. It's time to seek the Lord until he rains, R-A-I-N-S, righteousness upon you. And I put us because I'm talking to all of us. Hosea 10, 12, sow to yourself in righteousness. That means you've got to do it. Get in there and start. Reap in mercy. Live, live, yes, live in mercy. When you realize how messed up you are, you can have mercy on pretty. The only thing I have, I don't, I don't tolerate anything in their cult. I have mercy on everything. I do keep praying and love the people, but I'm not, I can't, I'm not messing with that stuff. I've spent my whole life trying to get people free. Break up your fallow ground. That means your ground that hasn't been plowed. It's hard. That's what it means. Sow yourself in righteousness. That means get busy and start working towards the Lord. Reading the word, praying, seeking fellowship. Get involved. Break that fallow ground up and start plowing it. Plowing it with the word and with your word, with your prayers and with praise. It's time to seek the Lord until he rains righteousness upon us and he's the one that will do it and so tonight we are crying for substance the substance of, of god into us substance not not we, we are thirsty for the real thing lord our flesh yearns for you where there is no water our flesh yearns for you lord god where we feel no water I, I, I know where the, I've been there. I understand. God, I ask you to pour water, 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 living water into every one of us. Increase it tonight, Lord. Floodgates. Let the floodgates open up in us. 
Now, if you're born again, you're, you you will always be born again. Once you accept Jesus, you can go you can go as far as you want to. You will be born. If you're born again, you will be with him. He never leaves you nor forsakes you. He's just wanting more of us. The more of us that goes, the more of this temple can have the water flowing. Nothing in here to, to, to uh, uh, harness it or slow it down or block it. So that's why the self has to go. We'll be dealing with that till we go out of here. Um, and it talks about this in John 4, Revelation 22, Isaiah 33, Ezekiel 47 and 46. But, you know, um, Ezekiel had seen the dead, the dry bones, and he had prophesied that, that, the, that they were going to come alive before he ever talked about the water coming from the temple. There was a day he, he knew that they were had sinned, they'd gone into bondage, they came out, they went back into bondage, they repented and they went back into bondage. But he looks and sees all these dead bones, dry bones, and he prophesies that they're coming alive. And and then that was like in Ezekiel 30, so in Ezekiel 47, then he sees the river, the waters, till they become rivers. It's really, I'm going to stop here tonight, and I will start here next week, and we'll go on because it's a lot. I wanted to tell you about the different um, ages. You know, the ages have, there's the maturity in it, and we grow, 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 grow until we're, until we're fully mature like fathers and mothers in the kingdom. But all of us have, war. if we have Jesus, we have the water in us. It's, and the, John says the rivers of water. There's rivers flowing out of us. And, we, and, and a lot of us are just letting like a trinkle out every now and then. And, and we're all at different, but some of us, I'm just telling you, it's God, as you yield yourself to him, you'll want to have more pouring out. You're anxious to have somebody pour it out on. Yeah, I mean, you're just, you're not even thinking you're pouring it out on them. So I ask God to use every one of us, use our voice, use everything about us to cause these waters to flow through the world to the depths of the sea where nothing can live, no living thing can, that's where a lot of people go where there's no life. I mean, they're totally dead to anything spiritual as far as the Lord's concerned. And when that water of the uh, uh, pouring out of us of the spirit of almighty God and that, and, and the, we're the temple and it, and that temple means the Holy of Holies. So it's the supernatural flowing out of us. The more we have of that, and the word is the word also, the word of God's called washing ourselves in the water of the word. You've got to be in the word. I try to pick up the Bible. I don't care how tired I am. I'll just read one verse so that when I hit the bed back there and go sound asleep, that's the last thing I see. It's just one verse. I'll just open the Bible and read it first. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It's the word of God. So just be diligent. You've got to be you have to be focused and diligent because the enemy, the whole thing here is the enemy tries to stop you all along the way so you never go where God's trying to take you. You have an enemy. David had an enemy, Saul. Saul was always trying to, you know, mess him up. We all have Saul's trying to mess us up. Demonic spirits, people. And that's why you have to be focused and you have to be determined to stay on track. And you've got a lot of people that um, everybody knows someone that can agree with them and pray and get one person to agree with you at any time. And the Lord will start moving. Tell them what you need and agree on it in Jesus' name. I, that's This is where I'm stopping tonight because I feel like that's the main thing I was supposed to do was go over all these places of deliverance and share with you the people that were delivered. Because uh, like that one little that one lady told me, she said, Linda, you don't understand. I'm writing down every word of those deliverances. They're so powerful, and they're teaching me. And I'm learning how to pray. And the and in the meantime, I'm doing this. The Lord's delivering me, and that is the truth. And that's just the way it is with all of us. The Lord is delivering us. And if you this is in the beginning where I didn't know anything, I got these two verses somewhere along the way back there. That you overcome Satan with the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. And that we have, in Luke 10, we have power over all the power of Satan and nothing can by any means hurt us. 
and and everything in the name of Jesus. I, those that's all I knew to start with. I didn't even know that really to start with. I, thousands of people were delivered just for me saying the blood of Jesus over them. I did. I I started seeing in the spirit pretty early, but I wasn't even sure what I was. You know, this was. Can you imagine not knowing anything? All of a sudden, being praying with somebody and you see this and see that. Like I was praying with the lady not long ago that's had all kind of, when she gets sick, she goes from one thing to the other. And I saw, uh, yes, thank you, Randy. I agree for you too, honey. And that your things are sold in Jesus' name and no devil from hell can stop it in Jesus' name. Plead the blood on everything to do with it. And bind every the demonic spirit trying to stop the sale of your place in Jesus' name. Tomorrow in Jesus' name. So, um, I don't know. I don't know where I was, but it was really critical that I saw that pop up. It ding, ding. So the Lord made sure I saw that to pray for her. Y'all all agree. It's critical that her place sells tomorrow. Critical. In Jesus' name. So, um, oh, I was telling you scriptures that I, at the beginning, that's, a, and all of a sudden I started seeing things. Well, uh, uh, there was a lady that had a lot of sickness, one thing after another, and I haven't had really time to pray with her. Uh, the deliverance, like I know that uh, she needs, because I'm trying to just survive here and keep up. I am going here, here, but I can't stay with anybody. It's just, but in the back of my mind, I'm always worried about these anybody that's out here because you know just because i can't get back to them i i saw a motor inside of her head and they had blade not a motor it's like a car i don't even know if the cars were made like this anymore they had fan uh, blades i don't know maybe it was a fan but anyway it would go around it was like i was looking at a car inside of an old because you know I, you used to work on our own cars and everything. I helped change tires and everything because back then you did, had one car and you, you fixed it. So it would go around. Well, one blade would come up and stop and it, something would hit her physically. And it just stayed there. <clears throat> and I don't know when it decided. Then another one would come up and it would be something else. And another one. And I went to war and that thing fell out of her. It fell out of her. Well, this has been, been you know, maybe a year ago or something. Well, you took, go back 50-something years, and I started seeing things. I had no idea what God, so he started talking to me. He'd give me the word, and then I'd say something. And, I mean, the Holy Spirit has taught me. He is the most precious gift. Lord knew I needed that gift, yeah, the Holy Spirit. But he has taught me and shown me into the, into the, the the holy angels and you know I, i've been in around i've never been into the throne room or anything like that up in heaven but i have been up i've been in the forest in heaven where i heard all the birds singing and there's not a leaf in the forest of thousands of trees there's deep green there's not a deep green here on earth like the green the deep green of those leaves and then i was around a river in heaven and and one time i was walking with jesus around the sea of galilee literally and, and I, I, not, I couldn't look, I didn't look at his face. I was always looking at his feet as we walked. So, uh, but I, in the beginning, I wasn't sure what was, you know, it's just really something. So, and the lady, one of the first things the lady came with her child with that had uh, asthma or allergies really bad. She, it just really just serious. It was like serious. The medicine, the doctors couldn't fix it. And we started praying, and the Lord called it a spirit of allergies, spirit of allergies. And I and I never well, why? How could I know anything like that? I was all new to me. And I remember com saying, "I command." That's when I learned sort of command. I, that just the spirit of God did it, the thing to come out of her, and the child was healed instantly. Never had another problem. And what long after that, a lady, uh, a man brought a lady to our house that had, uh, that was very educated, had a high, high power job, had to quit a job, had to uh, uh, find a little house, strip it of everything, had 100% cotton, everything in that house was 100% cotton. She couldn't eat, she only eat like one, she one or two, maybe three things total, and it had to be with nothing on it. She was like critical surviving. 
she couldn't go out. He picked her up and brought her to the house. And Shelby helped me pray for her. She was healed instantly. They left my house and went to an Italian restaurant. She might have been Italian, or he may have been. I don't remember, because listen, we're all new in this. People were just showing up at our house. She ate a big meal. She never had a problem. She never had a problem. We lived there several years. She was uh, not not too long before we moved there. They just called, just tell us hello and thank us or something. Totally healed. She came out of that house with unstick cotton, everything in there had to be cotton, and lit, went back, brought her home, and went back to her full life. Jesus Christ is the only one that can do things like that. Jesus Christ. I could tell you thousands and thousands of testimonies. But he has to remind me because he told me years ago. Now, I took notes on things like I just told you about the Nobel Prize thing, things like that, or, or, or deliverances that I, I thought, the name of them, or things like that. Not, But just a fraction of what I've heard the Spirit give me. He told me not to. I could not write down everything. It would become my Bible. He said, you just, when you need it, I'll remind you. So that's what he's done through the years. He's reminded me what I need to know right now. Just like the motor on that lady, or the fan that had a blade. That blade come around and it cut another sickness, another something in her. It fell out of her. Now, there may be something behind that. I don't know because I haven't gotten back to it, but... Because a lot of times things are layered. You know, that's just the way the enemy works. So you don't think you can never get to the, Yes, you will get to the bottom. You stay present. Jesus Christ is going to take you to the bottom of your problem and release the roots of it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So we're going to go to prayer again. And see if the Lord has anything else to say to anybody, give anybody. I'm right here. I'm, the Lord knows I'm a willing vessel. And, and I will blow on you before I in this and I'm thanking the Lord for healing our two children that um, were attacked before they were ever born and we ask God for total I read uh, uh, genetics anything um, any of those spirits I, I remember thinking about those two when I when I read that if I can just let me see if I can find it it was genetic because those I mean I specifically wrote down had they yes genetic disorder and cellular disorder that's that's good so we were agreeing with them they're being totally restored healed and brought up to their uh, by their age that they should be and even above that, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. So I want to thank everybody for being a friend of Master's Touch Ministries. I want to thank God for doing whatever he wants to do with it. And uh, maybe this summer, I may just start coming on and praying with uh, that the Lord just gives me things people need to be broken off of instead of trying to teach. Because, you know, really, I'm not, I'm, I share, I'm not a teaching, I'm always scared. I don't want to ever teach, say anything wrong, so I tell you to look it all up, your scriptures, and, you know, and, if, and get it straight in your own mind. I'm giving it to you the best the way I think, what I think, you know, it means. But it's just, I'm, uh, listen, we win deception one time. And no, and no one knows the word hardly like my husband knew the word. And we got in deception, and it was the people that knew the word, translate the whole Bible, we're Bible translators, the whole Bible into an Indian, um, they were in Mexico, and translate the whole Bible, 21 years they were down there, translating that whole Bible in that dialect, because they had never had a Bible, and, and then they came to the University of Oklahoma, both of them were doctors, he and his wife, and taught linguistics at the University of Oklahoma, and ne taught the word like, oh my goodness, did he know the word? Went to a conference in Texas, and came back deceived, and ruined his ministry, ruined their ministry, and we had to walk away. We were in it, and the Holy Spirit showed my husband something is wrong. We were in it for a while. Something's wrong. It doesn't add up. It doesn't add up with the word. 
I know he knows the word. You know, you know, you look at the whole picture. You think, how could this be? You look at the word, and it really was. And and two, there were five leaders. All of them loved the Lord. They got deceived some kind of way. They knew the word. Two or three of them came out and repented. And and what I can tell you because of our own experience and how long it took me to get straight and us. My husband just went to him and said, you know, this is wrong. And he showed him what and how and all that. And we left. And, of course, our name, you know, our, then we had a bad name that we were rebellious and all that. But we weren't rebellious because three of the top leaders came out and said it was wrong. And repented and went on with their lives. But what, what happened any time... And I've heard one of them teach this over and over, not every time he teaches, but he'll say, don't ever be in any group where Jesus Christ is not your covering. Jesus Christ is your covering. He is the one you answer to. You, the, he, puts she, he puts the fivefold ministry up to help us to build us up, to cause us to grow. And yes, we do. We submit under it. But that's you, your, your number one person is always Jesus Christ. Because the same Spirit's in you that's in them. They, they have positions by the Holy Spirit, and we are to honor them and, and flow with it. But when there's error, you get out. Don't, it will rob you of your joy. It will rob you of, you'll just dry up because you're under something that's not right because your attention it comes to always trying to do what you think they want you to do. And you and so now it's always this way and not this way. You always make sure you're up. This is your number one relationship. It's up here and then you work it in down here. But all, don't ever be rebellious. But when if it's bad, that's not rebellious. That's you make sure that you you got the word, you've got the Holy Spirit's witness, and other people, other believers that know the Lord see it, and they realize, and you compare the error with what you're seeing, and then you tell the who, who you go to the person and try to show them, but then you're free, go, and then wash it all off of you, break all the error off of you, so that you're not. All the deception, all the um, the guilt. You feel guilty if you're not really doing. It. Yeah, you may. It's, it almost puts a guilt spirit on you because you're afraid that they'll think you're not you're not doing exactly the way they want you to do it or something, instead of the work of the Holy Spirit. So, I'm just telling you that because it happened to us, and we and we were the leaders and took all of our friends into it. So, I mean, and then. Shelby says, we have to get out, Linda. And um, so for two or three, I had like two or three days, maybe four days. I thought, well, I, Lord, you've moved us here, and we, you've given us this huge ministry. We bought this person in. They live with us. We took care of them until they were able to establish their ministry there in Norman, Oklahoma. They live with us. I took one of my children out of their bedroom, put them in another bedroom, under the other child, and they had one of our bedrooms. We love them. So it wasn't that we didn't love them, and we still love them. But they got into error, and three of them came out and told how wrong it was and left it. But it's still around. But I'm, I'm not getting into it. I'm just telling you the main thing is that, that you are responsible to the Lord. You have the Spirit of God in you. If something doesn't sound right, something doesn't feel right, if, it, if, it, if you're always feeling like I can't do it, this, 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 for this, something's wrong. You is Are you pleasing the Lord? Just, just I can't even tell you, you, if you have experience, you'll know what I'm trying to say. But it takes your eyes off of Jesus. It really, it will take your eyes off of Jesus. And it's a subtle thing and you don't realize it till you're in it. So that's the main thing. I'm staying with Jesus, and I want all the help I can get from all this. Pro that God puts these in there for the edifying of the church, to teach us truth, not control, not manipulation. 
the fivefold ministry is here for us, and we need it desperately. We need the fivefold ministry desperately in the churches. So I'm all for that, but I'm not going to manipulation control. No, it messes you up. I love you. I don't know if that did you any good or not. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, God. I pray that you take everything I've said and use it for your glory, to bring deliverance, to bring healing, to um, open hearts and minds. Anything that I've said tonight that's your truth, that you use it for your glory, in Jesus' name. And I thank you for the way you, you've guided us through the years. You protected us. You've shown us when we're wrong. We've, you guided us, Lord, so many times. And the time when we've messed up, you've forgiven us and gotten us back on course. And I just thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. I pray for everyone that ever watches this. And I pray for those that are watching right now, Lord, for anyone healing. There's some, uh, uh, urinary tracts being healed. Urinary tract infections being healed. Sinus, sinus drainage and sinus infections being healed a loose tooth is being healed a hernia hernia is being healed Lord I bind the devil off of every person I thank you that you're healing and delivering right now in Jesus name diverticulitis is being healed an eardrum is being healed Something in your body is like cracking. Like, I don't know if you hear it cracking or you say that feels like you're cracking. Lord's healing, whatever that is in Jesus' name. Bones are being healed. Weak bones. Um, bones that uh, have lost calcium. The Lord's fortifying bones. And some and one person says, kind of pretty serious. God's going to give you wisdom uh, what to do and what to eat or take or whatever. And he's going to work with you to get those bones strong. And we say, we agree, and you're not going to break a bone as you are healed in Jesus' name, as the Lord's healing you and restoring you in Jesus' name. Lot jaw is being healed. Spirit of infirmity is being delivered in Jesus' name. Frostbite is being healed. I don't know where that could be up in Alaska somewhere. Frostbite's being healed in Jesus' name. Scoliosis is being healed. Um, oh my goodness, what is that? It's like diabetes. It's diabetes and the foot's, part of the foot's black. It's a gangrene or something like that. It's been said. We ask God Almighty for miraculous new flesh on that foot, new flesh that they don't have to amputate anything and it doesn't kill you, that infection that we ask God right now to heal you totally. In Je Father God, we thank you for miraculous healing in Jesus' name. We bind the enemy off of everybody that has infirmities of any kind. We bind and break the powers of them. Command them to go back where they came from. We release healing that it is written by your stripes. We are healed. We were healed at Calvary. You send your word and you heal us and you deliver us from all destruction. Forget not all your benefits. You heal all of our diseases. You crown our life with loving kindness so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. Lord God, I thank you for that resurrection life being poured into us. In Jesus' name. Dysfunction. There's several people with a subtype of dysfunction. The dysfunction is leaving and God's causing function to take place in Jesus' name. Normal function in Jesus' name. Carditis is being healed. Carditis is being healed. Something about synthroid. That would be your thyroid, but I don't know, something like synthroid, we ask God whatever it is to, to do, whatever he needs to do with it, so that it's perfectly okay in Jesus' name. Celiac disease is being healed. There's tumors, tumors, tumors in different places. The Lord's just washing them out. 
washing them out by the Spirit of God, the water, the water flowing from the temple is totally washing those tumors out of you in Jesus' name. Something about a handyman. I don't know about a handyman, Lord, if he's praying for something. Are you opening new doors for him? I God, I thank you for miraculous intervention for this man that's called a handyman. Whatever it is he needs, God, I ask you to give it to him tonight. By tomorrow, the things are changing in Jesus' name. Someone's in recluse, and the Lord's breaking a recluse spirit off of you and setting you free, and you're going to start mingling with people again, and you're coming out of your hiding, your shell. You're coming out of a shell in Jesus' name. Wow, something about racketeering. God, I don't know, but I ask you to intervene because that doesn't sound right good to me. I ask you to, to close it. If somebody's being tempted, if uh, if this is illegal, evil, unlawful, I don't know, Lord. I give that whole situation to you. I ask you to intervene, whoever's involved in racketeering. I don't know what that, I know it doesn't sound right. So we thank you, God, for deliverance tonight in Jesus' name. Just make them aware, put fear, like godly fear, in Jesus' name. Lymphoma. Did I ever call that out? Lymphoma. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the miraculous things you're doing tonight. I thank you for self. There's several people that are trying to sell things, but Randy just put that up there. Her name came up. And Randy's a lawyer. Lord, I thank you for selling her home. Selling those homes, in Jesus' name, the places to live tomorrow. Tomorrow, Lord, we ask you to direct every step of the way in the sale of those places tomorrow, in Jesus' name. And uh, there's two other people I know of that are trying to sell places, and there's like three or four that are trying to find a place that they can afford to live in. So we ask God Almighty to miraculously open those doors. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, Lord, I submit us all to you. I thank you that you are causing us to be more than conquerors. More than conquerors. That you cause us to be. I bind that into every one of us. That you are causing us to be more than conquerors. I bind every one of these healings into everyone that needs them. In the name of Jesus. And command the infirmities, the problems to leave their bodies. I bind them. I break them. I I release them. I, I ask you to cut them out of them, like push them out, Lord. In the name of Jesus, to bring total healing to everybody. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, total healing, total restoration. Totally, in the mighty name of Jesus, that there be no deficits anywhere, God, in our lives. In Jesus' holy name, cause us to flourish in the house of the kingdom of God. Cause us to flourish in every area. In the kingdom of God, in Jesus' holy name, in Jesus' name. I thank you for speaking to us, Lord, and speaking to us individually. If there's anything we need to do or not do or would help in any way with anything that people are praying for, God, speak to us through someone, about it, through the word, in a dream, through a word from the Spirit. We, I'm thanking you, God, for intervention in everybody's life that's watching this. Intervention. I bind an intervention from the Holy Spirit in every life watching this tonight. That there will be interventions within the next week or two for some of you. Interventions that you thought could not happen are going to happen in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, I give it all to you to confirm every bit of this by the power of the Spirit for your glory to bring glory Back to you, Lord Jesus, and you only, and you only. We praise you. We thank you. We love you. And I wrap everybody in, Lord, I put my arm around them. I wish I could hug them physically, but I can't. So I'm physically, spiritually hugging them. And it's the Spirit of God that gets on people when I hug them. That you put it on them right now that they feel. Feel your Spirit, God. Press it into them, Lord Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I'm blowing, I'm blowing your breath. You told me to blow, I'm blowing. You reminded me. In Jesus' name, the breath of God just touch you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, do a mighty work. 
finish, complete what you've started in Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' holy name. Cause us to rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. And I see some people dancing because God's breaking through for you. Like dancing. I see you dance and enjoy. Thank you, Lord God, for this. Thank you, Lord God. Take the heavy burdens, Lord, and turn them into joy. And I'm binding that, breaking, breaking the holes and releasing the joy of the victory in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. For all these precious people that I love and you've made a part of my life. In Jesus' name. I pray God's richest blessings on you. And just pray God guides me because I may be just coming on here and praying for certain things. And that's what we're doing. Um, I'm going to finish the water, though. But, you know, I've been I've been teaching every week, sh sharing. I, don't, I say I share because every week now for, what, almost two years? And I think I've missed three weekends maybe total. That's a lot. No pain. You can't. And I'm not. I'm just really I just try to pull something up that I walked in. I've experienced, and then I go with it. So the Lord sees that. But, um, I mean, I could start all over, you know, way back there. Uh, 2019, towards the end, I think is when I started. I've got them dated. Well, the first first month or two, I didn't keep, I didn't keep them. But then I started dating them after that. So, you know, but I want to do what the Lord wants. I am, I am what the Lord wants me to do. So I'm going to do what he wants me to do. So y'all pray I know exactly that I don't miss him in any place. Because if it's just for one person that this I'm on here for, then it's worth it all. God, we all have our own call on our life, and I'm going to do to the best of my ability. And Shelby's behind me 100% praying for us. And he's with me. And on the weekend, he's kind of lonely because this is when I do... do it's Saturday and Sunday is pretty filled up. I try to get him out of the house once every day for a little while. We do something, but it's it you know. But he's with me, knowing the price he's paying for this. So, and it's not a price because we're thanking God we've got the opportunity to do it, and that we have we can use the this this laptop and my phone and do it. And the children come over and, and you know, do fix it. And then we uh, have George that we pay to keep the YouTubes up and check me for scamming. And, um, and I wanted to tell you that prayer I prayed over the nation, someone requested that it be put on the web. I think it was Glenn that requested that we put that on the web. And I called George and asked him, and he sent a word, I think, this week. Some, one day this past week, that he was going to get that prayer and put it on the web. And it's a prayer that you can pray over the nation and over your own home. Just pray it. It's, it was, he told me to get on there and pray that. And it's a prayer. I, 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 I prayed it over the radio 19 and 2006, but way before I was um, um, coordinator, prayer coordinator for the Christian Coalition. It was way before that. The radio station, they asked me if I'd do a prayer for the nation. So something was going on then in 2006. And I and I did, and they were going to do it a certain day. And then when he read it, he said, no, we, Linda told me this later, that he said, no, we have to put this on and we have to do it now. And so it was on, they owned several uh, radio stations, big, it was a family that owned a lot of radio stations. They had it on all of them, went to millions of people probably. And it was a prayer for our nation. Well, I just kind of um, worked on it a little bit, and I and I read it over on face. I read read it on I think on Master's Touch Ministry, and I wish I knew what I had on, so you could listen to it. But it was a prayer that I went on there and just did that prayer for the nation, and I'm praying for our nation. And it might have been the day of prayer, or the day it was either the day of prayer or the day before, or the day after. That, that would be the date that would be on it. One of those three dates. Oh, my goodness. I belong to the uh, presidential prayer group, too, and they send me prayer requests every day, what, what to pray for up it, over the nation from Washington. So that's always good. And I was honored to be the prayer coordinator for the Christian Coalition for uh, uh, Roberta Combs and Michelle Combs run that and they have an incredible uh ministry 
for America. They have fought so many things, good things for America, things that need for God. They have really have. And the Lord's, they, the Lord, I pray, blesses them and everything they do and continues to bless their work because it's, it's powerful. I love you. And most of all, the Lord Jesus Christ adores you. He loves you. He adores you. He doesn't just, you're like, you're, you're, every person is so individually made by him and for him. You weren't just thrown here. You were planned before the foundations of the world. You have to know that you are loved, that you, he, you are special in him. He's like, he's made you, specialized you. For what you are here on this world, in this world, your time here on this earth. And I ask y'all to pray that we, none of us miss anything daily that we can do for the kingdom. There's been several days just this week, I thought I need to go on there and just say something. And I'm afraid if I go on too much, it's going to mess up tonight. So people want, but the, it'll just hit me. You need, and may, if, if, maybe that's the way the Lord will be taking me instead of this. I don't know. Y'all pray I stay right in the center of his perfect will, not in his. I need to be at this time of my life in the center of his perfect will. And I'm praying for all of the people from these foreign countries that are, um, are, are sending prayer and saying they're praying for us too. They are. Some of them are praying for us. And we just thank God for them and that they're part of the body of Christ and that the Lord uses them mightily, that he heals them, that he furnishes them like supernaturally with everything they need for their lives. A lot of them are pastors. A lot of them just pe people that love the Lord are wanting to get to know the Lord. We just thank God for every opportunity we have to bless anybody. And we send blessings around the world. Ask the Lord to enlarge our territory and that people are not blessed and blessed and blessed in Jesus' name. Good night. The Lord bless you and keep you and let his face shine upon you <coughs> and that he's merciful. To us, and my, I got that tickle in my throat. It's worn. It's time to quit. I love you. Good night. I'm gonna drink my tea, and I, I had one of those birthday parties and put lemon on it. And I fixed me a glass of tea before it came on in it. I love you. I love you, sweet friends. I'm gonna close out now. Have a blessed week. I pray nothing but favor on you. Wherever you go, that the favor of God is on you, your husband, your wife, your children. Favor. I bind favor into all of our lives in Jesus' name. That we see favor. That it goes with us, follows us, goes before us all the days of our lives in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen.